the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The law of faith. These are the laws that activate the realm of the spirit, the supernatural. We must be taught how to participate with the realm of the spirit, the law of faith. Numbers chapter 23, please, and verse 19. When we have it projected, I'd like us to read it together. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Numbers 23 and verse 19. Ready? Read, please. God is not a man. Stop. Remember we discussed this yesterday? That God became a man. God is not a man. If you say God is not a man, it means he must submit to his creator. All men submit to their creator. So if you say God is a man, the person you should worship is not him because he has become a creature. Hallelujah. So God is not a man that he should lie. This is an information about men. God is taking away shock from your life already that when you meet men, this possibility exists. He didn't say bad men. God is not a man. That means in the character of every man is a tendency to lie. Now we're discussing faith. Please follow me. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? This is a very powerful information about God. That God is not a man that he should lie. That means every time you hear God speak, this revelation should be at the back of your mind. That the one speaking is not joking. This is an attestation of God's integrity. Are we together now? God is not a man. He does not have the possibility of lying. Let me tell you, the Bible did not say that he cannot lie. If God by mistake calls me a woman, I will change immediately. So lying is getting something wrong. That ability is not in him. He can't say this is light and then it does not become light. So whether it's a mistake or whatever it is, when he says it, it will become what he said. So the possibility of saying something and seeing another thing is not in God. That's what the Bible is saying. So if he calls your pain joy, it changes immediately. If he calls your tomorrow blessed, that tomorrow has to become blessed because God has spoken. This is called integrity. The character of being consistent. Are we together? God is not a man that he should lie. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. This is the second information about God. We are teaching faith this morning as a law that activates the supernatural the Bible says but without faith outside of faith it is impossible to please him why because of this information that whoever comes to God must believe that he exists and then number two that he has a name called a rewarder it's not what he does it's who he is that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, don't come to God hoping you will get something. Don't come to God hoping he may give me. There is a level of certainty and confidence that God is called a rewarder. So every time I come, the proof that I met him is that I never go back empty. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Not a giver, a rewarder. A rewarder means he gives you what you seek. A giver means he gives what he has. 
a rewarder the bible says he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you know many people in church pastor teach about faith we teach a lot about faith and um, we do our best to communicate what we know to be faith but our results clearly show that many people do not understand the subject of faith because for many believers respectfully speaking our boundary of the understanding of faith is just declaring and hoping that we'll see no that is that is a very minute part of the equation of faith the foundation of bible faith is revelation not revelation about your situation revelation about the god who will be the deliverer of that promise before you trust a man if i tell you to come and collect a hundred dollar bill your first assignment is not to come your first assignment is to vet my integrity you have to check whether i have the capacity so there are two things listen please faith in god is based on two qualities of god not all qualities of god there are just two qualities of god that are required as far as faith is concerned number one his integrity please write it down number two his ability believing god is based on the awareness of his integrity and then number two his ability ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the bible says now unto him who is able so he settles it once and for all that god is able there is never a problem with his ability he is able to do the bible says able to do not just able to speak there are men who are able to speak i can help you but they are not able to do so the bible says that god is able to do and then he says exceeding abundantly even above all we ask now the fearful part is above all we think you know how vast your mind is your mind can think dimensions that will surprise you and the bible says that is it does not scare god he has the ability to allow your mind stretch itself and says is this all you can think i am still god above it so when your requests don't seem to come it is not an issue of god's ability because sometimes you see we look at the magnitude of that which we desire god to deliver to us and um sometimes out of pity we say god okay it looks like you can't go this far okay so i come down to your level and god says the problem is never my ability so two things the integrity of god god does not lie he can be trusted number two god is el shaddai you know what that means the multi-breasted one he sustains the power to make everything that needs to be captured in your life for a fruitful christian life available to you this is the foundation of bible faith just believing god arbitrarily does not bring faith you have to vet his integrity the bible is a compendium of god's integrity his dealings with men through several dispensations to the end that we can study and see the consistency that he is believable that you can trust him the bible archives men and women who trusted god in time past now faith is hebrews 11 says the substance of things hoped for it calls it the evidence of things not seen it says for by it the elders obtained the elders obtained the elders obtained a good report it says through faith we understand that the cosmos the walls were framed by the word of god then it begins to list all of these exploits that were done by faith if you are going to partner with the realm of the spirit to produce possibilities in this life you will have to understand the law of faith there are no guarantees in life your guarantee is the integrity of the one who sent you we live in a world where we are obsessed with guarantees you have to sign that you will be there for me you have to sign that you will not fail me you have to sign that our discussion will not change eventually unfortunately this world does not have guarantees your guarantee is the integrity of the one who sits upon the throne so he can send you and say go to us and not tell you what to do there and yet you go 
knowing that when you arrive there he will speak we are weak because we do not trust god abraham take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest so don't tell me you love him i already know take him there and offer him upon a mount that i will show you you've not shown me the mountain just start moving when you get there i will tell you bible says if ye be the children of abraham then you will do the works of abraham trust in god i believe god are we together now so revelation now the end of your revelation about god should produce something in you the bible calls persuasion please say after me persuasion we are defining the faith equation now that revelation leads to conviction or persuasion it was the apostle that said for i know whom i have believed he said and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day conviction what is conviction your depth of persuasion your unbendedness i know he will do it i know he will do it if he said i will lift you this year i know he will do it I take my eyes away from the temporary setbacks because I know he will do it. Conviction. Conviction supplies your staying power when the situations refuse to change. Conviction. So you, you, you can say, no, I know this God. The reason why we vacillate in our trust and our convictions is because we have not had an encounter with the integrity and the ability of God. You know, the way God speaks, Pastor, He does not speak like He's talking to men. He speaks to men like He's talking to Himself. This is why it's very frustrating to hear God. Many people like to hear God, but if you really hear God, you will wish you didn't hear Him. So you will have an excuse to just live your life because hearing God has implications. It would demand a responsibility on your part that you will need grace for. For instance, God will not say, go and build that house. God will say, when it's complete, let me know. This is how God speaks. He does not talk to men like he's talking to men. He talks to men like he's talking to himself. So he will talk as if there is no process in the entire thing. Now, you are crying over a bill of 1 billion naira, 2 billion naira, and God talks to you and never talks about the money. He says ensure the house has space for children ensure it has a mission arm and you are saying lord this is not the issue we have architects in portacourt and god never talks about where the weakness is he expects you to trust him enough if ye being evil there is a name god is called abba abba means source it means sustainer it also means defender and the character of fatherhood according to God's teaching is giving if ye being evil know how to give so a father who does not give is evil are we together now I'm saying this because there are many of us who are wondering how will my destiny be built the dreams that I have, the visions that I have are mighty, they are enormous. And you begin to stress yourself, putting a burden on your uncle he was not designed to supply. And get you are getting angry at people everywhere. Listen to me. Save yourself that stress. There is a God in heaven who has integrity and ability. Every miracle looks impossible till it happens. Whether you need five naira or five million is still faith that will produce it. So in the realm of the spirit, it doesn't matter whether what you have, whether you reduce it or increase it, it makes no difference. It is still faith that will bring it. Please understand what I'm sharing with you this morning. And then you will no longer be afraid of the future. Every man you see whose life has become enviable today had no guarantees anywhere. There was no bank, no uncle, no nothing. No. Men went like madmen at the instance of the, the word of the Lord. Men went to virgin lands that they did not know anything about.
Can you believe God enough? Apostle, I came to Port Harcourt. It's not my fault. I had a dream. God said, come here. Now I'm here. And look what God is making out of my life. We're talking God, the creator of the ends of the earth. The one who has said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. There are attributes of God that when you know, the devil cannot speak to you again. The devil manipulates your gaps in your understanding of God and he plants seeds based on attributes of God you do not know. The prodigal son knew something about his father. That no matter what it is, I know that my father loves me. And he said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be called your son. But take me as one of your servants. Smart man. He knew the father will never take him as a servant. It's just a diplomatic way of saying, I'm sorry. There is something about God that if and when you know, even when you have a dream that negates it, oh dear, I wish I had time. I hope you know that the realm of the spirit cannot be made manifest until you receive and agree with whatever is there including your dream if i have a dream today for instance and i see myself maybe losing out in life or failing i can get up believing it has happened no the dream is seeking for your permission listen listen at the expense of your eternal salvation god still seeks for your permission to come into a life he created what else should not seek for your permission to come you know the way the devil has made us believe is like he has the ability to veto anything no he's a master of the sense realm he knows how to manipulate spiritual realities if god can be polite enough to knock at the door of your heart and wait till you open it then that dream can wait then that oppression can wait they all knock you just don't know they are knocking they knock by acting they are in your life already so your fear allows them to come in i saw a scripture that changed my life he said abraham from where you are lift up your eyes so I can lift up my eyes from where I am. I don't need to climb a plane to lift my eyes. I can stand in my city and lift up my eyes. And I will still see. From any city in the world, when you look up, you see the stars. When it has to do with the stars, where you live is not a disadvantage. So I lifted up my eyes from where I was. that you will know what to do like jesus you will go back and knock on the door of finance and say i'm no longer begging you i found the keys and you will swing open those gates and all of a sudden you will begin to see the blessings of the lord then you will understand that the testimonies you hear are not a lie you see when you when you are used to pain you will get angry when people are testifying because you will think it's too real they are lying is it not in your bible that when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream we're like them that dream that the songs we sing as special numbers will become our experience ah that you've heard people tell somebody stand up and go and bless or not you've only heard it as a testimony but now you will be a partaker of it that you are sitting in your house and prepared blessings come to you and you don't just laugh and people say you are lucky oh, but you know you are operating by keys and regardless of where you go it will work that now you can scale your business it may not be the devil that stopped you from scaling your business let me tell you it may be that god already knew that this version of you and the version of understanding you have scaling your business will be the worst thing that would happen to you so he delayed you as an act of his love to minimize wastage in your life until the required light comes so after this conference he can tell you now you can go and then you take over lagos like reverend sam prophesied to you men do not rise by mistake nobody wins the olympic by mistake you can go to the stadium by mistake but you don't win by mistake it's time for us to be intentional over our results 
I'm bringing you to a level of quintessence in the spirit where we stop shadow boxing, guessing things. What is the principle for restoration? Do you know it? What is the principle for favor? I know favor just happens. No, sir. Then you will never see it. What is the principle? When I'm in trouble, what do I engage to come out? Because I live in a wicked world. What if my boss hates me and vows that for as long as you're a member of Global Impact Church, I will frustrate you here. Ah! Do you know the ordinances that you can engage? Is it not in your Bible that when a man's ways pleases the Lord, that he makes even his enemy? But it's not under... You see, when the Bible talks, it talks prophetically. You need the eyes of the Spirit to x-ray what was said and see where you play the role that you have to play. Otherwise, we'll continue to quote scriptures to our detriment. When you watch a professional drive, there are many things you are looking at that you are not seeing. You don't even see when he changes the gear, when he initiates the trafficator and the rest. Then he gives you the whole thing. And you find out there are many things to be done. And yet you are just still with him. It's called mastery. Please hear me. The church that Jesus is returning back to get is not a weak church that has been beaten by life. And then we scrounge our way out. Escapism is not the doctrine we were given. We are given victory. The Bible says, and this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. Are we together? That you must insist. I'm going to be praying shortly. But you must insist. Lord, this cannot be it. This cannot be it. Thank you for what you have done, but this, I know there is more. I confess my ignorance. I've not taught you any exact principles now. We'll deal with that. There's no time for it now. You've, you've been, you've come here since morning. So the, our next time we'll take specifics and just end some of these things in our lives. Why do men hate me? Why is it that I love the Lord with all my heart? But every time I come to men, I cannot get their help. No helper helps by himself. There is something that makes them help us. Every man is a man until the mysteries of the kingdom turn them to help us. If you call men, you will never get anything. But if you call helpers, they will come. If you're in ministry here and you came for this conference, please listen. Ministry will never grow just because you have your tribesmen around you. Their solidarity is too small to make you global. You need an understanding that takes you far. When men of other nations call on you and call on your God, when there is a clarion call, a Macedonian call, it is because the hand of the Lord is upon you. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. With me is riches, wealth and honor, yet durable riches. When your children become small and they are mediocre, it is not their state. Listen, it is not even your not being educated. It's not true. Psalm 112 says, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Then he says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, yet his righteousness endures forever. Is that true in your life? Or is it just a devotional? That you shall call upon a man and a nation will answer you. Is it true? Do you believe that? Do you believe that in one day Zion can be born? Is it not in your Bible? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Catabranda Catacos, Catabranda Catapacotosco to break a take a look at her. The face of development. Lord, grant me the 